Hello, welcome to the second video on the definite integral. Last video, we introduced the notation, we gave the definition, and we gave some tools to help you evaluate the sums from the, you know, from the definition. In this video, we're going to look at evaluating some finite sums. And then um, in the next video, we'll actually perform an integral with the definition. All right. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Thank you for watching. My website is calcoach.com. Please uh, allow me to help you through this calculus journey. Let's get started. So our job is to evaluate the sum using those summation formulas. Here's the sum. Riemann sum. Here's a, a finite sum. Okay. I equals 1 to 6. So I is 1, you got 4 squared. I is 2, 5 squared. When I is 6, you have 9 squared. You definitely can add those numbers up for sure. We want to be able to... Uh, Evaluate this maybe without a calculator, of course. So then uh, that six, you know, if it's anything higher, we'll be in trouble uh, unless we have these formulas. And so we have tools, we have formulas. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, first thing is to take the i plus three quantity and square it. So i squared plus six i plus nine is what you get when you foil that out. Next thing we want to do is the sum of a sum. We could break that up and have. The sum of the i squared plus 6 times the sum of the i plus 9 times the sum of 1. So we're going to pull out those constants, 6 and 9, those coefficients. And then we're going to appeal to the formulas that we discussed in the last video. So um, the red, the green, and the, and the blue here. Uh, the sum of the i squares, the sum of the i's, and the sum of the 1's. Uh, the sum of the 1's, they equal to n. From i equals 1 to n. The sum of the i's they equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. As sum goes from i to um, from i equals 1 to n. And for us, n is equal to 6 in this. Uh, the sum of the i squares, there's a formula there. It's a cubic formula. I won't read it to you, but you see it. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to rip out the red, the green, and the blue, put these guys in their place with n equal to 6. All right. So 6 times 7 times 13 over 6. And then 6 times the quantity of 6 times 7 over 2, you have 9 times 6. It's manageable. Let's work it out. Uh, the 6s can cancel. Um, the 2 can cancel from underneath the, uh, the blue there. And so we have 7 times 13. That's manageable. 91. Um, the 2 turns the, one of those 6s into a 3. So this is not so much manageable. That's okay. 6 times 21 maybe would be the best way to do it. So 126 there, and then 54 for the last one. 91 and 126 and 54, that is the sum. Okay, that's 271. All right, now if this is a question on a quiz, maybe that number six will be higher, so it's not something that you can just you know grind out and do the calculation yourself. You'll be forced to use these formulas. Um, now let's look at a limit on one of these as the, as the n goes to infinity. Okay, and all these steps will be needed in order to evaluate the definite integral from the definition. We're just building up our skills here. All right, so we have, uh, this is actually from some integral. We don't know what integral it is. Uh, we don't know what the function is. But if you get to the point where you could actually know the integral, then it would be much easier to, to do than what we're doing here and, and how to find the integral in a, in a shortcut kind of way. Um, we don't know that yet, so we're just going to try to grind this thing out here. And so using those tools and, and the summation formulas, we can do this. Uh, we have 9 times i squared over n squared plus 1. All of that is inside of the summation, and the summation goes from i equals 1 to n. Outside of the summation is 3 over n. That has nothing to do with i, so that can come outside. And we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity. First up, split this up into two separate sums. Okay, keep the 3 over n to the outside. Okay, so the sum of the 9i squared over n squared plus the sum of the 1. Okay, all right, great. Now we'll factor out here. This, this, um, this 9 that's over n squared, it has nothing to do with i, so we can pull it out of the summation. Okay, and then we'll appeal to our formulas, um, the sum of the i squared formula and the sum of the 1s. Okay, uh, the sum of the 1s is n as i goes from 1 to n, 
and the sum of the i squares, that's the cubic formula, n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1 over 6. So we'll put that in place of the red summation. Now remember that red summation is multiplied by 9 over n squared, and so, but this is a doable limit. This is a manageable limit. This is a, a calc 1 limit, a earlier in the semester calc 1 limit here. Okay. Um, limit as n goes to infinity, so we have to recognize that in the end, we're just going to have a degree of the numerator versus degree of the denominator kind of argument and be able to get the answer quickly. We just had to get to this point, which is, which is a bit tough. Um, and so um, we're going to distribute the 3 over n back in. Now that the summations are gone, let's put the 3 over n, multiply it in. That'll be 27 over n cubed. Okay, there's a 6 down there. And then um, the... The other part, don't forget there's the plus n from the blue summation, from the sum of the ones. So the 3 over n also gets multiplied by that, and that becomes a 3. Okay. And then, you know, it's it's degree of the numerator versus degree of the denominator. If they're equal, then the limit is the ratio of those coefficients of the, of the highest degree terms. And, and so um, you'll have a, it looks like you might have a 27n cubed in the numerator, but be careful, there's a, there's a 2. Um, as a coefficient on one of those factors there. So it's really a 54 n cubed. Now you have other terms that are there, but you really only care about that leading term. Um, and you can actually cancel with uh, the n's that are in the denominator. You have three n's in the denominator, so you can cancel one of them. And then uh, here I have, uh, basically if I was to multiply out the 2n plus 1 and the n plus 1, it gives me a nice polynomial. Then it's more obvious to see that we have 54 n squared now over 6 n squared. Some other terms up there too, 81 n and a 27. We don't care about those terms actually. For that first fraction there, the limit is 54 over 6. Okay, degree of numerator equals degree of the denominator. The limit as n goes to infinity is the ratio of their coefficients on those leading coefficients. And so it'll be uh, 9 plus 3. Yeah, the answer is 12. Okay, now later we'll learn that this is associated to some integral. And once we learn how to integrate quickly, that would be the way to go here. Um, the 3 over n is your delta x. This parentheses here is some f of x, some function. that, um, And we'll have to figure out what the integral is too. We could do this by, by um, not having to go through this all this work. There will be a better way. All right, let's end the video here. And in the next video, we'll be given a function, given an interval, asked to find the exact area under the curve from the definition of the derivative. And so we'll take these two parts that we just kind of did here and uh, put them together. Really, it's this part here. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. Uh, reach out to me if you need any help. Uh, calccoach.com is my website. All right. Take care. See you in the next video.